John chapter 15. I am the true vine. Well, then there's got to be another vine out there. And we know according to the Bible that there is an Antichrist. So there's got to be a vine out there opposite of Jesus. A vine produces fruit. The Antichrist has got to produce fruit. And Jesus is the vine. The true vine. I am the way. The truth. And the life. And my father is the husbandman. So he's likened into a vineyard. It's like God that planted Jesus Christ. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit he taketh away and every branch that bears fruit he purges it that it may bring forth more fruit that's interesting because you're going to apply that to the christian i'm saved that's it i'm not going to do anything else all right get out of here get out still part of the vine but then again, you're, you're taken away. But those that do bear fruit, all they that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Listen, when, when you start getting uh, twigs and branches cut from you, that, that hurts. And when God cuts off those extra leaves, those extra portions of the branch, that's so you can put that's so you can put all your energy to where the fruit is. You prune a plant, whatever plant it, you get rid of the, the unnecessary parts. The tomato will produce branches. Those branches will never produce tomatoes, so you remove those things. You take a tomato plant and you pinch off the top. Well that tomato plant won't grow high, it'll grow bushier. It bears fruit. Uh, it bringeth for fruit more fruit. The more that God trims for you, the more fruit you're going to bring. The more fruit you're going to bring, the more tribulation you're going to get. The more fruit you you bring into the life of God, the more God's going to attend for you and care for you. When he looks down and he sees branches that got fruit, that's the apple of his eye. No pun intended. That branch I'm going to take care of. I'm going to support that branch. I'm going to do everything for that branch. That withered dead branch up there? Get rid of that thing. Give me the ladder and give me a saw. And what is the vineyard? What is the branch that comes from that we've already studied in the gospel? How about the sower that went out and sold the seed? And when he planted the seed, some of it grew. Some of it produced 30, 60, 100 fold. Then some of them just leave because of the word. They were tribulation. They were in trials. They were tribulation. They were offended. Some people leave God on their own. Now you are clean through the word. Oh, look at that. You are clean through the word. Which I have spoken unto you. How do you know that you're clean? How do you know you're a Christian? When was the last time I opened your Bible? Oh, I have it. How do you know you're clean? Tell me a Bible verse. Somebody comes walking. Well, I'm a Christian. All right, show me a Bible verse. Tell me how and why you got saved. Abide in me. Now imagine a Christian going to church and abide in me. That, that hymn. How many times has that hymn brought up in church just saying, I can't sing. You don't want me to sing. You think a dog was hit by a car and called the police. But that song, Abide in Me. And how many people in church will sing that song and produce no fruit at all in their life? Hmm? Better be careful what you think. You will you will be hellable to God. Well, the song leader chose the song, yeah, but you sang it. You'll have to give an account. 
those hymns that you sing, sweet hour of prayer, sweet hour of prayer, you haven't put prayer five minutes in the entire week. Abide in me, and I in you. A fruitful Christian gets God's attention and gets Jesus, hey, I'm living with him. And the Holy Spirit is already abiding in you from chapter 14. You want the presence of God with you, you produce fruit. Now, there will be a mimic, no, we produce 5,000, no, that's not the kind of fruit. Sometimes you don't even see the fruit. Last time I checked, branches don't have eyes. Missionary work, gospel tracts, I don't see the fruit I'm producing. But God is working and cleaning up my life, trying to get me right so I can bear more fruit. Go to a uh, apple tree in its orchard. Walk up the apple tree. Say, Mr. Apple Tree, how many apples have you produced this year? Ain't gonna tell you nothing. Abide in me and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself. You ever walk outside going down the path and just see a branch that's hanging there nowhere? There's a branch there floating. No, there's no ooh, branches. You go down the street, we just had a hurricane here, and you look at all these branches. Are they producing fruit? No, they've been cut off from the, from the, the, from the mother plant. They've been cut off from the vine. Abide in me, I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself. Except it bide in the vine. No more can ye except ye abide in me. The only way to produce fruit as a Christian. You must abide in Christ. Now if your life and your living is not living to what Christ has told us how to live. Don't you dare say you proclaim fruit. Because you remember there, there's another vine from the true vine. If you bring the world into your evangelism, what do you think that fruit is producing? It's producing worldly fruit. And that's not acceptable to God. Because that's not the branch. The branch produces holy fruit because God said, be holy for I am holy. You're doing it my way. I am the vine. Ye are the branches. He that abideth in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me you can do nothing. And that's what today's ministry is. It's without Christ and it's nothing. And they think they're producing something and they're producing nothing. As far as rewards of gold, silver, and precious stones. They're producing wood, hay, and stubble. When somebody comes up to you and says, we wouldn't do it like that, that's perfectly fine. I, I see your worldly food. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch and is withered. And men gather them and cast them into the fire and they are burned. Well, that's not the church age. Are you going to say a Christian that does not produce any fruit at all is going to burn in hell? And yet, what do you do? Like I said, we, we just had a hurricane here. What are you going to do with all these trees? Most of them will end up in a fire some way, somehow. 1 Corinthians 3.13 Abiding in Christ will keep you out of the fire. Not baptism, not church attendance, abiding in Christ. And the thing is, you can say, those that abide in Christ are going to produce fruit. When you see somebody who does not produce fruit, uh-oh, there we go judging again. 
Salvation does not just say there's prayer. There are results. Paul says with the heart. Now you may call me whatever you want to call me, but I'm not your typical Baptist. What happens to someone who, who's, who's saved and was producing fruit and, and did right and now they're not doing good? They're not. I guess they're an old withered dried branch. You know where an old withered dried branch get? He doesn't get no more water. Jesus said, I am the water of life. If you abide in me and my words abide in you. Oh, look at that. There's the word again. I love Jesus. Do you love his word? Well, no. I don't even break it out Sunday mornings. Really? Christ said, if you abide in me, my words abide in you. Don't you dare claim Christ if you don't have his words. Now watch this one, how people claim. And ye shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. Ooh, many claim that one. Name it, claim it, without the word. To send you a check in your prayer envelope. Don't go and claim that verse. Oh, I can ask anything with Jesus without the word. And you know why it was important to get the word here? Because if you study the word of God, you know that this wasn't a name and claim it. Rightly divine the word of truth that you will not be put to shame. All these name and claim it preachers will be put to shame at either judgment. I don't know which one. Here is my father glorified. You want to make God happy? That you bear much fruit. Not fruit. Much fruit. I don't know what kind of word much is. Noun, verb, adverb, whatever. I don't know what that is. Probably an adjective. But it describes the fruit. Much. Bringing forth much fruit pleases God. God gets the glory. How? People believe on Jesus Christ, get saved, and they grow up. That glorifies God. What about when your, your evangelist avows the flesh in the world? Who gets the glorification? Who gets the glorification when your church got 5,000 people saved last week? Who got the glorification? How about when your church or your name gets gets the printed material? Who gets the glorification? That's what it's about. Well, our church does it. Well, why don't you go out on your own just evangelize? Just yourself in the name of nothing else but Jesus Christ. How about that? How about taking a fistful of unmarked gospel tracts and go talk to people about Jesus Christ only for God and only for Jesus Christ? But they wouldn't know where to go. You mean if they truly get saved and truly get right with God, God will not deal them to a church. God is so unworthy and so stupid, he can't guide you where to go. So shall ye be my disciples. Uh-oh. Discipleship. Another thing we learned <coughs> from the mouth of Jesus, you got to be a fruit bearer. You got to abide in Christ. As the Father hath loved me, and so love I so have I loved you, continue in my love. This is beyond comparison to love of Christ. Continue in my love. He's going to the cross. If you keep my commandments, ye shall abide in my love. As I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. 
So you got two aboldings here. You got aboldings in Christ, and you got aboldings in the love of Christ. These things have I spoken unto you that my joy might remain in you, that your joy might be full. How do you get true joy? You get the joy of Jesus Christ, the fruit of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace. The world's going to be celebrating pretty soon. Joy to the world. And in January, they're going to get the bill. And they're not going to have no joy. Yet my joy lasts constantly. I can sit there at work and, and have something figured out. I don't even know what I did, how I did. I say, God, thank you. I can have joy in my family. I don't see that around with other men. That's a rare thing. My joy might remain in you. Oh, possibly you can lose God's joy. It's not something that comes standard package. It's not something that's going to give to you forever. You can lose it. This is my commandment. That ye love one another as I have loved you. Now who is he talking to? He's talking to the disciples. He's carrying them to Calvary. Nowhere does that verse say that he's talking to the world and worldly Christian. He already said, you're not going to produce fruit. Get out of here. And it's funny because he's got Judas with him. Yeah, he calls him friend because Judas never repents and gets right. Christians are to love one another. They're to help one another. Their love is to be so grand among each other that the world would envy Christian love. They ain't around today. That holy kiss you find in the end of the, the epistle. We make fun of it. Well, why not? But better flipping Christians off. A lot better than uh, gossiping about Christians. Now watch. Greater love hath no man than this. That a man lay down his life for his friends. That's kind of interesting. Because if you go scripture with scripture. As far as the husband's love for his wife. There you go right there. You know a girl who looks at a man is it uh, you, to be my husband and for me to be your wife is it will you die for me is a biblical response because didn't, didn't, didn't Paul say a husband is to love his wife as Christ loved the church greater love than no man than this a man lay down his life for his friends isn't a husband and wife supposed to be friends? Not, not what I've seen. You, you, you badmouth your wife. You make jokes about your wife. You, you take marriage as a light thing. What was the conduct that Jesus had with these 12 men and one of them that would sell them out? He stuck with them to the end and showed up after the resurrection and then rebuked them because they were wrong, but because, hey, gentlemen, you didn't get it. But when it came to those who did not believe and those that rejected him, you vipers, you generations, you, man, he let them have it when it came to the disciples. There was a different tone. No man should scream at his wife like Jesus screamed, screamed at the Pharisees. Yeah, honey, I, I don't like that or, you know, that shouldn't be done. Okay. And verse 13 is a verb. It's a sacrifice. This is for God so loved the world that he gave his own. There it is right there. 
And that's the same verse that Paul says that a husband ought to love his wife as Christ gave himself for the third year. And I'm going so far to say, when that doctor tell, tells your wife or, you know, her kidney's going bad, the first thing should come out of the husband's mouth, am I compatible? I guarantee you that would come out of the lips of her husband or more husbands more often, they'd be treated with a little more respect. Ye are my friends. That's funny because that's what Jesus called uh, Judas. Friend. Alright. You got friends? I'm going to give you the biblical definition of friends. And these don't match. You need to get rid of them. You stand before Jesus Christ. You stand before the, great, uh, the, the judgment seat of Christ. And you lose it all. I'm not going to. Here's a... Ye are my friends, if you do whatsoever I command you. How's that? Do all your friends produce fruit? Do all your friends love the word of God? Do all your friends abide in Christ? No? What are they doing to your friends? Henceforth I call you not servants. For the servant knoweth not what the Lord doeth. You know, got a bunch of men running around doing the chores. They don't know what the big guy's doing. They don't know what the what their owner is going to do. But I have called you friends. For all these things that I have heard of my father, I have made known unto you. You want to be a friend? You take the word of God through Jesus Christ and God the Father and you tell you tell your friends about Jesus. You tell them about God. You help them grow. You know what your main conversation would be if your friends? It'd be about the Father, the Word, and Jesus Christ. Ye have not chosen me. But I have chosen you and ordained you, including Judas. You can have an ordained devil working miracles and doing everything like the other disciples were doing. Now, is that going to kick in the butt? Isn't that 1 Corinthians, I think it's 11? What's that? That's how the Antichrist is going to deceive men. Yes. Matter of fact, he says with power. And what I think is Thessalonians. And what's the biggest thing today? The power of the force. May the force be with you. And that other junk. I guess we, our place right now is all decorated with death and Satan's holiday, Satan's birthday. That ye should go. Ye should go. Ye should go. Ye should go. That's a verb. And what? Bring forth fruit. Look at that. What did they do in the book of Acts? What was their conduct? What methods did they use? That your fruit should remain. Oh, are you producing people who say a prayer and end up at the great white throne judgment? You produce fruits that end up at the judgment seat of Christ and will go up in the rapture and walk the streets of New Jerusalem. That's the remaining fruit. That means you got to have the true vine for them fruits. Of eternal life, the salvation. Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. Get the world crap out. Your means of evangelism. Check out who the main focus is and what it's about.
that whatsoever ye shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it to he may give it you. Everything? If you're doing what the true vine wants you to do, you're not going to ask for selfish things if you are in the spirit. The, f the flesh lusted against the spirit. The spirit is, is, is against an enmity of the, of the flesh. Where you live is where you will be asking the Father. Father, give me all the, the necessary points I can get so I can get all the raises at work. Father, been going knocking on doors, going knocking on doors. We've done it as much as we could every day this year. I mean, every week this year, maybe every day for some. We tried. We haven't had one person yet. Lord, can you just have one person come to glorify you by Jesus Christ? Can we go out there with our feet with the Gospel of Romans chapter 10, Lord, and have one person get glorification to you by them trusting Jesus Christ as your Savior? Lord, my feet hurt. My chest is not, my heart is not as good as it used to be. My mind is wandering. I'm old. I'm fragile. Lord, if you can give me one more oomph to go do something for you. Even if I got to go sit in a potty at Walmart and leave a gospel track behind. If that's, if that's the best I can do, that's asking God for things of him. Didn't, the, didn't we already, I think it's Matthew, didn't Jesus already tell us the Father knows what we have need of? Food, raiment. No, in there are cars or money. I got a stupid thing at work and I don't care. Because I know how I'm treat, trying to treat my customers, but I'll say, you know, I'm part of a team now. And my numbers, what I'm supposed to do, affects the team. That's not for me, you know. I gotta help others. But I know a few there, you know. They money, 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 money. Forget the customer. He may give you these things. I command you, ready, that you love one another. Really? When you got a church full of clicks in your own little gathering. You got the white sheep over here and you got the black sheep over here. Well, well, wait a minute, aren't we all washed? Don't we have one shepherd? You got the sheep with the curly hair over there and you got, you know. You know, when you read Fox's Book of Mars with Christians, you realize how with the love of the brethren are. Read some of those stories. If the world hates you, uh-oh. I was in a church where the world gave them a plaque. From the town of. We gratefully are you are not doing the work of God. When you're on all the TV stations, prime time, preacher, the world loves you. You got the radio time. The world loves you. But the Bible says, if the world hates you, ye know that it hated me before it hated you. There are people out there we deal with, if you were to tell them the world hated Jesus, they, they would have down have a heart attack. Because we just all love Jesus. No, you don't. Proverbs 29, 27. The world just loved Jesus. And what did they give him? They gave him a cross. And said, Barabbas, you can go home. Forgot about Barabbas, didn't you? If we, if, if ye were of the world, the world would love his own. Uh-oh. We'll have Wednesday night theater church group. We'll have teenage 
non-alcoholic dances Saturday night. I've, I've been there, seen it all. Vacation Bible's coming so good, every church is having it now. Including churches that don't have a Bible. But because ye are not of the world, uh-oh, but I have chosen you out of the world. We were in the world once. Christ said, come out. Therefore, the world hateth you. You stand up for Christ, they're not going to have anything to do with you. That's a mark for all that live godly in Christ Jesus and suffer persecution. That's a mark you're doing it right. And I ain't talking about doing stupid. I mean, you're just living right. I mean, you're not going to, you know, knocking down manger scenes and chopping off the head of Santa Clauses and mashing uh, Halloween pumpkins and uh, putting poison in, in church eggs and church uh, churchyards and all. No, they hate you because you preach the word. They hate you because you get the gospel track out. They hate you because you love your family. They hate you because you're doing right. They hate you because you don't belong. You're a misfit. Remember the word. Oh, Jesus said. Memorize scripture. Oh, Jesus wouldn't say that. That's much as Jesus would say, hell, hell, hell. Remember the word that I said unto you. Well, you better have a Bible where Jesus said it and not cut, manipulated, and added on. The servant is not greater than his Lord. Some preachers think they're the ones. Because they got air time. If they have persecuted me, uh-oh, they will also persecute you. If the Pharisees will deny Jesus and outright try to put him to shame in a group of people, what do you think they're going to do to you and your ministry? If they have, if they have kept my sayings, they will keep yours also. You know how you know when you're you got a public ministry, people say, Hey, amen, glory to God for the word. You're preaching a word. Amen. I love that word. Love hearing you preach. Love seeing those gospel tracts. Keep it up. Oh, my children just loved your event so much. They just they just love the candy. They just love the toys. They just love the, the, the acrobats. They just love the bounce house. What about Jesus? What about the word? Oh, yeah, that was five minutes in a, in a two-hour day. Yeah, right. Hey, stand before the judgment seat of Christ, and I'm right and you're wrong. But all these things will they do unto you for my name's sake. Don't take it personally. I guarantee Jesus had a loud voice. I guarantee it. You can't preach to 5,000 people on a, on a beach shore and have them all hear you. Hey, people, I'd like to welcome you to my little fellowship party. Oh. <laughs> Don't you just feel the love of God? <laughs> You Pharisee scribes and vipers! Jesus, you're offending him. I'm sick of you guys too. Give me that whip. Get knock your things over. He made them angry. So do I. Praise God. But all these things they will do unto you for my name's sake, because they know not him that sent me. When somebody comes up to you and bad mouths you about your public ministry from the Bible, they don't know God. You look at them with a the silent breath of your heart saying, liar. 
I let my light shine. Liar. I just let liar. I go to check. They're a bunch of liars. Have a good day. Oh, okay. <laughs> I've done that many times. If I had not come and spoken unto them, they had not had sin. But now they have no cloak for their sin. Why do you preach at a farmer's market? So they will know that they are sinners, and sinners will burn in hell if they don't believe on Jesus. Don't, don't preach hell. Christian told me that. If I had not come and spoken unto them that they had not sinned, but now they have no cloak for their sin. And I will preach to those people at the farmer's market and say, you are without excuse today. You can never say, God, I never knew. Because a loudmouth man with a Bible will tell you, you're going to hell because you're a sinner. And not only are you going to hell because you're a sinner, you're going to die to prove that you're a sinner. And Jesus saves. Now try to go to the great white throne judgment and get your way out of that one. You can. Because I preach every week, Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. You're going to stand before the one that, that, that could have saved your soul. Now watch this. He that he hateth me, hateth my father also. You got any friends that hate Jesus? They hate God also. I'm reading it. I'm reading it. If I had not done among them the works which, which no other man did, they had not had sin. But now have they both seen and hated both me and my father. Now these people in Jesus' time, they are going to get a greater hell damnation than people today. Because I can't perform a circus act or a puppet show or call down fire from the sky. I can't do that. You can bring me all the sick people you, you want to bring to me. I can't absolutely do nothing. So you can't believe on Jesus Christ by what I do. All I do is preach the word. These people that Jesus is preaching to and during this time, they've seen the lepers get unleopardized. I don't know if that's a word. They've seen people who have been maimed walk, stretch out their hand. They've seen the blind see. They've heard the hearing, the hearing less hear. They have seen where devils have possessed the body are now gone. And they still hate Jesus. And Jesus said, you hate my father. And they're going to watch Jesus die on that cross. And they're going to hate him on that cross. But, he, but this cometh to pass. That the word might be fulfilled. That is written in the law. They hated me without a cause and never once could they produce a charge a accusation to Pilate not one and as we go to the cross but when the comforter is come Talked about this one, verse 14. When I will send unto you the, from the Father, even the Spirit of truth. The Holy Spirit that indwells from you, Jesus says, go. The Father says, go ahead. He shall testify of me. Now, when you got religions out there mumble jumbling in the name of the Holy Spirit, that defies the Holy Spirit in verse 26 of chapter 14 in this verse. The Bible says the Holy Spirit is not going to speak of himself. 
The Holy Spirit is only going to testify of Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone. The Holy Spirit does not want no glorification. He is sent to comfort us when we don't have Jesus. Which proceeded from the Father, he shall testify of works and wonders and speaking in tongues. Absolutely not. Of me. You're mopping the floor. And you just get that thing in your heart. Oh, Jesus, you're just so wonderful. Wow. You just start singing your own hymn to Jesus. You're reading your Bible. You're just going through reading your Bible. Wow. That's interesting. Man, I read this Bible 10 years. And the Bible says that's the Holy Spirit. Everything you know about the, the Holy Spirit is from the... Everything you know about Jesus comes from the Holy Spirit. You don't believe me? Go ask people about Jesus Christ who are not saved and don't have the Holy Spirit living in them. Go ask them. He's a teacher. He's a liar. He's a prophet. He's anything but God. He's not that Jesus. Go check out the, the church tab in the yellow pages. Find out about Jesus. And ye... Also, uh oh, you remember the disciples? And ye also shall bear witness, because ye have been with me from the beginning. Book of Acts. We're called to be Jesus' witnesses. In a way, I didn't receive God as my Savior, I received Jesus Christ as my Savior. Now, I know God is Jesus, Jesus is God. I'm not going to cross that Trinity line. But we're told to go out in all the world and preach the gospel, the gospel that Christ, Christ, Christ died for our sins, according to the scriptures, was buried and rose again, according to the scriptures. That's my personal testimony. I've lived it. I know it. I'm told to go and bear witness of that. I can never go bear witness how it is to, to own and operate a nuclear power plant. I'm going to tell you, I have an idea. I've seen pictures of the control room. I've been to a nuclear power plant. I've been right up to the one of my jobs. I go right up to the building. I couldn't tell you what's inside that building. Anything. But I can tell you what it is to be a true Christian. And when I give the Holy Spirit the Word of God and feed upon the Word of God, the bread of life, the water of life, and I let the Holy Spirit have a free will reign in my life, boy, when I open up my mouth for God, the Holy Spirit says, let's go. And when people come up to me, you're too loud. That's a hate message. That's terrible. Uh, you're so mean. You're telling the Holy Spirit, you're too loud. You're too mean. That's a hate message. And Jesus said, Marvel not the world hates you. I ain't preaching. It's the Holy Spirit in me using his word about who? Jesus. That's the Holy Spirit. So when you deny the street ministry that's found in the Bible, you're denying the Holy Ghost. Uh-oh. Be careful. <laughs> 